Can GLP-1s help with ADHD? Let's talk about it. Hello friends, welcome to my channel. My name's Kristen, and for the past six months, I have been using ZepBound to lose weight. Now, in one of my past videos, I discussed how ADHD and BED are linked. A lot of people that have BED suffer from ADHD, and it has a lot to do with dopamine, um, impulsivity, boredom, things like that. But now there's some exciting research, still in its infancy, research showing that GLP-1s could have possible benefits for people with ADHD. So what is ADHD? Some people will sit around and be like, I'm so ADD, oh my God, I forgot this, this, and that. Usually those people don't have it. It is a very complicated disorder that they they still don't fully understand. It's a neurodevelopmental disorder characterized by symptoms of inattention, hyperactivity, and impulsivity. It affects both children and adults. It can have significant impacts on daily functioning and the quality of life. It's believed to be caused by various things, um, including genetic, neurological, and environmental factors. Researchers have been puzzled for quite some time about what causes ADHD and they're exploring the mechanisms that contribute to that for a really long time now, ever since they've realized that a lot of people suffer from it. And I say suffer because it's not an easy thing to deal with socially in your day-to-day -day life. Uh, it goes deeper than in inattentivity. It can go to like socially, like rejection sensitivity, dysphoria, like things like obsession, limerence, like uh, cutting people off when they're talking because your thoughts are moving so fast that you want to say whatever it is that you're thinking about before you forget. And that is super annoying to a lot of people and I had to learn the hard way and still sometimes it'll pop out where I interrupt someone but truly listening to people I wasn't listening ever I was just always waiting for them to get done talking so I could say what I wanted to say um, not because I felt more important it's just I had a fear that I was going to forget what I wanted to say if I felt like it was relevant to the conversation a lot of people with ADHD are mistaken for narcissists I think I'm not saying that they can't be comorbid but they think that we're just completely we seem probably completely self-involved and self-obsessed but our ability to hone in on little one little thing can really it's not just about inattentivity it's about hyper focus like if I find something that I'm really into I could tell you everything there is to know about rats I wanted pet rats so bad when I was younger and I found out every single thing I could about rats why I don't know because I was interested in it and I wish I could apply that to like something I'm not interested in like math or something like that <laughs> I could be a damn space engineer honey astronaut there's been a little buzz, um, some hypothesis around why GLP-1s might help with ADHD. Now, they originally believed GLP mostly targeted the metabolic system. However, there's growing evidence that GLP-1 receptor agonists may also influence brain function. So this is all from a study I will link below. Studies have shown that these drugs can cross the blood-brain barrier and interact with brain regions involved in appetite regulation and reward processing. This interaction could potentially affect neurotransmitter systems, including dopamine pathways, which are implicated in ADHD. So far, they've only studied it in people who are using semaglutide or Ozempic and Wagovi. Some studies have reported neurological effects could be relevant to ADHD. Research has indicated that GLP-1 receptor agonists can improve cognitive function in people with type 2 diabetes, a condition that often co-occurs with ADHD. They also believe these two are connected because they think that blood glucose plays a huge role in brain function, which we are finding out more and more about as time goes on. They're excited about this because if you diagnose people with ADHD and then you prescribe them, usually they get prescribed something like Adderall or Vyvanse, which is a drug, which I will get into in a second, which is also used for people with BED, um, or, you know, some other, some other thing that inhibit, like that helps you focus. I know some people take Adderall as like a a, you know, a stimulant for them, but I've taken it and it kind of just made me normal, like feel like a normal person, honestly, pretty bored. So in another study, they're showing that they have found a link between blood glucose and ADHD symptoms. The brain relies heavily on glucose to function and as its primary source of energy. It's essential for fueling the brain's cognitive processes, including attention, memory, and decision-making, which obviously ADHD does affect. This stuff's not adequately regulated. It can disrupt your neural pathways. 
ways, leading to dysregulation of a lot of things and your attention and your emotions and you know what you remember, what you don't. Sometimes I'm so distracted. It's not that I'm not remembering what's happening. I've never absorbed whatever it was. Like if I put something down on the count right here and I wasn't paying attention when I did that, I'll forget my keys all the time because I'm not paying attention to where the fuck I put them. And that causes problems because it's like, why can't you remember anything? It's like, I just didn't ever make the memory to begin with, if that makes any sense. I wasn't paying attention to make the memory. My thoughts are always going a million miles an hour. I've always got many, many, many things going on in my head. Glucose, besides providing energy, regulates neurotransmitters. And those are little chemical messengers that facilitate communication between your brain cells. Dopamine and norepinephrine play key roles in attention, motivation, and impulse control. Functions that are often impaired in individuals with ADHD, which I can attest to. Fluctuations in glucose levels may influence the availability and activity of these neurotransmitters. Okay, honey, keep up. There'll be a test on this later. Okay. <laughs> By understanding how these affect each other, researchers are hoping to uncover new avenues to treat ADHD pretty much, or maybe better understand the neurological mechanisms of how it all coincides. GLP-1s increase in insulin sensitivity. They've been shown to improve memory and learning in animal studies. They're making those rats super smart. And it also may protect against neurodegeneration, such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. And investigations into the impact of dietary factors on brain glucose levels. ADHD symptoms have garnered attention in the scientific community altogether. Everyone is really interested in this because this would be a huge, huge breakthrough for people like myself. Although they need further exploration, they're not quite sure why it works the way that it does quite yet, but they're getting there. I found since I started taking Zepbound, which is Terzepatide or Manjaro, which is the, there's Ozempic, Wagovi, and, there, and there's Zepbound and Manjaro. That's the one I'm on. And I've noticed personally, since I've started taking this, my ADHD symptoms have improved quite a bit. I have more energy to do things. And there have been Redditors online that talk about the same thing. I have more energy. I actually want to do things. I feel motivated to do things. You know, before I would just have what's called ADHD. ADHD paralysis, where I'd think about doing something all day for days, weeks, maybe even a year, I'd go buy all this stuff or whatever project I wanted to work on, because I am an artist, um, for those of you that don't know. And um, I would, I just would never start, I would never do it. It's like I would think about doing chores all day. Oh, God, I got to do these chores, I have to. And then I think about it so much. And it's so overwhelming, I don't do it at all. So it, it kind of plays into that It affects every aspect of your life. And that's what I meant earlier when I said that. When medication is prescribed, it's usually address core symptoms of the disorder. They're stimulant medications. There are non-narcotic versions of ADHD meds, but they made me feel so bored. I, I can't even, I couldn't even like express myself. I couldn't even like lift my arms up. So it's supposed to help enhance the, the neurotransmitters for dopamine, but, and behavioral regulation. But a lot of people have bad side effects and overall it doesn't improve the quality of their life as much as, as they'd expect. Also in one of these studies, it talks about Brain stimulants affect glu blood glucose in people with ADHD. So there's been, they're aware of it. Um, this medication is not a miracle though. Okay. Like I know a lot of really good things and really bad things have been said about it. Some people really have a bad time with this medication with GLP ones because of the side effects and they can't take it at all. But so far I've been, I've been good myself. So I've been loving it. My sister just started it this week and I'm hoping that we can get her on the channel guys. <laughs> Researchers are also saying that stimulant medications can affect glucose because they're not, people who are taking stimulants usually aren't eating a lot. So it's suppressing their appetite, but GLP-1 is as well, but it's regulating your blood sugar. Stimulants are not. So uh, for a medication with ADHD, it's not regulating your blood sugar and doing, a, and doing a bunch of other stuff. It's just doing that. So they theorize that they need to work on dietary factors in combination with ADHD medication to make, you know, it more available and optimize a neurobiological environment and management in individuals with ADHD. So they're aware of it. Could it help you? I don't know. It seems like a lot of people who have ADHD and they go on Zep, on the Zepbound Reddit and they talk about their experience. It seems that most of them have had long-term benefits and to, to prescribe it for things like it's right now it's only approved for weight loss and diabetes but um off-label use uh they they are not technically you know diagnosing or they're not technically like prescribing this for off-label use of like pain management adhd things like that so you know it's very hush hush so overall what i think they're finding out is that blood sugar matters more than they thought it did and if it wasn't for people with diabetes to figure this out um i'm not sure how long it 
would take for this to be studied. You know, we know that obesity is a huge epidemic here, but it's affecting so much more than just how you look and your emotions. It's, it's your whole body's function altogether. We've never had so much access to food in the history of mankind. So kind of navigating this whole thing has been interesting. There's even people in companies trying to make food so addictive that the GLP-1s are, can't fight against it, are nothing compared to that. But I think that would be incredibly hard to do since it slows down your stomach emptying. They'd still be eating the food really slow. But I guess grazing, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I want to talk about that in another video because these people are using their, their smarts for evil, man. <laughs> a lot of people don't stay on this medication for a super long time. And when I talk about GLP-1s, it kind of is a, a lifelong, it's a long-term med. Some people can use it for like a month and be fine. But if you're using it to treat pain or migraines or ADHD, it's not curing those things. It's just keeping them at bay. So there's no cure for ADHD as of this moment. I don't think it's something that necessarily needs to be cured. It does affect my life in, in positive and negative ways. So I'd love to hear your thoughts about what you think about this. And do you think if you do have ADHD, has it benefited you all, at all to take a GLP-1 if you have? I would love to hear from those people. I see it on Reddit. So I'm going to read a story or two off Reddit here of people and their own personal, uh, you know, experiences with it on Zepbound, which is a, an already group that I'm in. I will link these below if you want to read the whole thing. Somebody said, wow, Zep and ADHD. I only just started last Thursday, but for the first time in my life, I feel like I have executive function. My brain fog is lifting. I can plan and use my time wisely and actually get things done. And yes, I've been feeling the same way too, honey. Me too, uh, Jess Darling 9. It's like I magically have more hours in the day. I don't have more or less energy, but I am now capable of so much more. I hope this isn't a temporary side effect. And if it is, I now know I need to treat my ADHD moving forward. Anyone else feel the same sort of shift? And yes, babe, I do. I definitely do. People said, I just started Vyvanse three weeks ago and it hasn't done anything yet, but I'm only up to 20 milligrams. See how with that medication, you'd have to like move up and wean yourself off of it. Black Sheep Sis says, curing my ADHD. I just started on the 2.5 milligram on June 7th and my husband thinks this has cured my ADHD. I was on amphetamines for over 20 years until the shortage a few years ago. I couldn't focus on anything and now I have been cleaning, planning a vacation, even started sewing. Has anyone else with ADHD felt this way? It is working better than amphetamines without the nasty heart flutter side effects, at least for me. I hope the drug company sees this and looks into the potential use for the drug. Don't worry, they are. Oh, and I'm down 10 pounds. Starting weight was 346. Scale today said 336. Now this is from a year ago and I hope this person is still doing well. I have to say I'm six months in and it is still curtailing my ADHD symptoms and I'm on the lowest dose at 2.5 milligrams. Somebody in the comments of this said, I did feel it helped my ADHD symptoms for the first few months, but now I've been on it for two years and not so much. I feel amazing, but I'm back on my ADHD BS. So it could be just be like, uh, you could be getting used to it. And then over time it stops working. I've been on ZepBound since December, 2023. At first, my ADHD seemed to go away completely. Now, six months later and on 10 milligrams, I would say about 80% of my ADHD symptoms are still gone. I was on Vyvanse for years. ZepBound has been much more effective and without any rebounding effects that I got on Vyvanse. So that's pretty interesting. So for some people, it the whole time they've been fine. And then others, like they've noticed that the medications become less effective to help them. So I wonder if, you know, I guess just everybody's different with every one of these symptoms. Some people are taking GLP ones with their ADHD meds. And I think there's some drug interactions there. I'm not too sure about, I guess everybody's different though, but that would scare me a little bit. <laughs> so can a GLP one help you? That would be up to you and your doctor to decide if you could tolerate the medication. Some people are micro dosing it to help with certain things like pain, inflammation, weight loss, things like that. Not sure about that, but I would like to talk about microdosing GLP ones in another video and how that's being marketed to people. I will also be talking about this rise in peptides. Um, I know GLP one is a peptide, all very like hush hush. They're not allowed to talk about it. Very interesting stuff. And people, I don't know, like it scares me the thought of injecting something. I don't know what it is or where it came from. So I will talk about that in another video. My six month uh, update will be coming up and we all know what I'm going to say. I love it. <laughs> but for everyone that's joined me so far, I really appreciate you guys. I'm hoping to get my sister on the channel. Anyway, thank you so much for everyone who's joined me. I hope that gave you some information on ADHD management. We're studying GLP-1s to help with ADHD management. What are we dropping today, folks? Drop a brain down below. Drop that little brain emoji.
strategy. And uh, so I know you made it this far into the video and uh, let's talk about it below. Do you suffer from ADHD? Are you on this med? Has it been helping you at all? Other than that, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.